Ooh. What's up, everybody? My name is OMG WTF LOFWBRB. Welcome back to more Total Extreme Wrestling 2016. We are doing the Local to Global Challenge, playing as our own created company, the IWC, the International Wrestling Corporation. And we are in the year 1971. I guess the month is May right now, since I'm looking at it. And we are on the title screen. Mostly I start these on the uh, shows, but I've got a couple things I want to go over with you guys before we head off into the actual show portion of this. So um, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different this month here for the uh, month of May in the game, not like the actual month. As you can tell, uh, if any of you guys have been paying attention, I mostly run my shows on Tuesday, but I'm doing this one on Friday, week one, and I mostly actually run on the second week too, but... Um, Unfortunately, if we go to the finances here, uh, it, it has been a little bit of a struggle to be making money. And if we do make money, it's not a whole lot. It's maybe like a five hundred dollars here, maybe at the nine hundred if we're lucky, two thousand. But we're really battling a, uh, a falling economy. I can't look at it right now, unfortunately, because the show is booked. But uh, the economy is falling, falling in America. Uh, the wrestling industry is falling in America. So both. We're, we're, we're battling a failing wrestling industry and a failing economy in America right now. And uh, it's not too good to be a local company during this time, unfortunately. So, really our size is kind of the problem here. We have to get to a small company. We're, we have to be at a 11 importance. Unfortunately, our importance is only at an 8. And it doesn't look like it's been growing anytime soon. Unfortunately, this only tracks popularity. But that's okay, because I wanted to go over the popularity. We've been fluctuating, which is kind of unfortunate because most of our shows have said we've increased our popularity. So if anything, you would think our popularity should be okay. We, we should be moving up pretty quickly, but if anything, we've been losing popularity, which is kind of interesting here. I, I talked about this in the last show a little bit, or the last episode, but at one point in November of 1970, we were at an 11 popularity, and then we dropped to a 10 popularity, and we've been pretty much at a 10 since i mean we did drop back down to a nine we are back at a 10 apparently but if we look at this screen here uh okay no it does say we are uh, before it said nine i believe but anyway it's still at a 10 which i guess isn't the worst thing but i'm gonna try to do something here that's probably a really bad idea but who knows maybe it's a good idea i mean the old saying is you've got to spend money to make money am i right so I'm going to take a suggestion from one of you guys in the comment section, and uh, I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to be running two shows this month, so the uh, episodes that will be uploaded to the channel this week will be from the same month, and uh, hopefully we don't lose like five grand or something like that or whatever it is. And uh, maybe if we're lucky, maybe that'll uh, increase our money and our wages, and we'll actually make maybe a little bit of a profit or... Worst comes to worst, our popularity keeps going up and we get to a small company faster, which will not only, you know, give us more of a fan base, but I believe we also get money right off the back. So that'll be cool as well. But it's a big gamble. We're going to take it and uh, hopefully it pays off. That's all I've got to say there. And hopefully I, I made sense there. I don't know. Anyway, let's go ahead. Let's start off the show. We are, let me just double check to make sure that we are in the, uh, yep, our generic venue, the uh, front parking lot of the local Walmart. We open up with actual in-ring action for once here. No promo or anything. This isn't the WWE. I got to take a drink real quick, guys. My throat is parched. Okay. There we go. Sponsored today by, uh, Monster Import, if you guys were wondering. Not sponsored, sponsored. <clears throat> anyway, so we're starting off with uh, some in-ring action here. We got a match. 34 E-plus as the debuting Don Anderson, one of the uh, new superstars that I hired here. Relatively on the cheap side, and that's what we want. Right now, I'm not really worried about how great they are in the ring or how much experience they got or anything. I just want to know if you're cheap, because... Golly, if I was getting paid $300 to go show up in Tucson every, every week, 
Man, oh man, would I be making bank. Good lord. Don Anderson, you're a rookie. You don't need to be making $300. It's the one thing they need to change in Total Extreme Wrestling. They need to make it more realistic. Rookies should not charge money. Just saying. Unless you have like a certain amount of popularity, you should not have to... You, rookie should not charge money because it's kind of effed up to say, but as a rookie in the wrestling industry, you're kind of being paid in exposure. You're hoping that, you know, someone will see you or, you know, more people will be like, hey, why don't you come to this show with me or why don't you come tag along with me and I'll see if this booker, we can get you in here and all that. And then hopefully your hope is that maybe when press the booker enough or you do enough work for the booker to be like, you know what, here's a couple bucks for the night or some gas. I'm sure some other wrestlers will understand that. Let me put it this way. I'm maybe a year into the business, and I don't like to brag or anything. I mean, I haven't had a whole lot of matches under my belt, so I really don't like to consider myself in the business for a year. I like to consider myself like a year-long rookie because it's just like a long rookie year to me right now. But anyway, I've only ever been paid once, and it was only because my wrestling trainers managed it out. I honestly probably wouldn't have taken a paycheck if they never would have offered me that night. Even though that mat, that night, that show is really... I don't want to get too much into that stuff. Maybe I'll talk about wrestling, like my experiences in the future. But I don't have a whole lot under my belt right now to talk about. So, got off on a little weird tangent there about why Don Anderson should not be paid $300. I mean, good lord almighty. That's some people's paychecks for... Well, that's kind of sad if it is. But that's like high school paychecks, so... Anyway, weird tangent. My apologies. 34 E plus rating here as uh, the debuting Don Anderson takes on our local mafia member Guillotine Gordon and about that had a decent reaction from the crowd and subpar wrestling to it Guillotine Gordon goes over Don Anderson in 5 minutes 48 seconds with his new submission hold the torture rack and uh, I don't know if the torture rack wasn't around in the 1970s but I had to create the move like I had to make the move in here because I envision Guillotine Gordon doing like a torture rack for some reason. So maybe he wasn't around here. Maybe Guillotine Gordon will be credited as the creator of the torture rack now. Who knows? Either way, he did get the victory over Don Anderson, even though the Avenger, as we see down here, gave it his best. Uh, I wouldn't call him the Avenger. Pretty much, I guess the whole gimmick is that he stands up for what's right. So I guess he's a superhero. I don't know. Maybe that's his new gimmick. We'll make him a superhero. Although, um, my whole idea was, like, he's just kind of like that baby face guy that you see, like, in those movies. Like, that always gets the girl and all that. That stands up for the nerd that gets bullied and stuff like that. You know, just your typical good guy kind of thing. There was no other gimmicks that I really felt matched him. And I thought about making him a cowboy. But we do have Frank Dalton, even though we don't really have Frank Dalton. Because he only can wrestle on Fridays. Which is today... And I did kind of want to get him on the card, but he didn't fit anywhere, so what can you do? <coughs> Either way, uh, he got an above-average rating on his Avenger gimmick. That's good. Guillotine Gordon, really off his game. Come on, Guillotine, what are you doing? <coughs> Sorry if I'm coughing. My throat itches, guys. I'm going to keep this monster import close to me. I mean, that's why it closes, right? But anyway, Guillotine, really off his game here tonight. I feel like he's always off his game. Got the show off to a strong start. The crowd was hot. Don Anderson with a 28 in-ring performance. Guillotine Gordon, a 28 in-ring performance. Don Anderson in his debut match. I mean, I don't know if he's had other matches in the world. But his debut match here in the IWC, probably in the Southwest in general, same performance as Guillotine Gordon. That's not too good, Guillotine. Although, I will say, the fact that you guys got an in-ring performance of a 28, but a 34 rating on your match, that's pretty good. Don, I like you, kid. I see some big things for you, Mr. Anderson. Who knows, I might have to uh, be giving a mid-carder a, a regional championship here if uh, we don't increase our popularity before the year's up, which I don't think that's happening. So, uh... Who knows, maybe Don Anderson might uh, might be the one to take that belt off of Jody in the future. Either way, though, Guillotine Gordon improving in his performance, so at least he made the most of his appearance here tonight. 
Moving on, we go to a 43 solid D rating here. And the match is over, but despite the match being over, and despite the referee demanding Guillotine Gordon to put Don Anderson down, he's telling him the match is over. Gordon is not listening. He still has Don Anderson, the young rookie, up in the submission hold, the torture rack submission hold. Anderson is just screaming for pain. And finally, a hero arrives. A hero needs a hero. And Dan, I almost said Don Anderson again. There's too many Dons. I have Don Anderson, Don Savage, and then Don Arnold, and then there's Ripper Savage and Don Savage, and then there's Les Roberts, and uh, there's another guy with the last name Roberts, or maybe it's just Robert Fuller. I don't know. There's so many people on my roster with very similar names. Anyway, Don Savage, the all-American hero himself, Former military man. He's fought in wars, you know. He comes down to the ring. He races down to the ring. He kicks Guillotine Gordon in the gut. And uh, Gordon finally drops Anderson. And then Savage and Gordon kind of give a little bit of a brawl in the middle of the ring. The Mafia brawler against the real American hero. But Savage, back, he backs him up. And he fights him off. He takes him out with a clothesline. And Guillotine... Or maybe not a clothesline, actually. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Guillotine Gordon, actually, is not taking no clothesline out of the ring. He manages to maybe, you know, Don 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 Savage... Maybe, too many dang Dons. I'm looking at Don Anderson's name, but I'm looking at Don Savage's face. Anyway, Savage. We're just going to call him that. He goes to bounce off Guillotine Gordon from the, uh, the ropes. Gordon hangs on to the, the other rope that he bounces off of instead of going back to... Don Savage, he hangs on, and he drops down. He rolls out of the ring. He ain't having any of that. He is not having any of that. He just had a hard-fought battle against this young rookie, Don Anderson, and he's not taking any of Don Savage's crap. Unfortunately for Guillotine Gordon, Don Savage is fired up, and he takes to the mic, and he goes, Where you going, tough guy? What? Someone your size steps up to fight, and you back down like a coward? Back in the war, cowards like you were the first to go. But if you get... What? If you get paid, what the hell am I trying to say there? That's not what I... <laughs> what the... <laughs> what was I... What was I writing? That's not what I was trying to write. But anyway, <clears throat> I broke character. Cowards like you were the first to go. But if you... I think I was trying to say, but if you've got a pair. But I said R and... I think that's what it was. But if you've got a pair... I dare you to step up and try to take me out. And uh, Don Savage, he's daring Guillotine to get in the ring. Guillotine is not having any of that dough. He's just kind of doing that whole wave off. Like, you ain't worth my time, schlub. You ain't worth the Guillotine Gordon's time. I'm not doing that. Uh, unfortunately, what Don Savage does not see is that there's a cannon on the loose, apparently, and the cannon is named Les Roberts as he comes running in from the crowd and he jumps Don Savage from behind. And uh, that leads to a little bit of a brawl between the two. And then once Don Savage gets a little bit of the upper hand on the young Les Roberts, because mind you, Les Roberts, I believe, is in his rookie year right now, uh, Don Savage calls to the referee to... Uh, ring the bell because he's making this match official if Les Roberts wants a fight it's a fight he's gonna get pretty much so uh, there we have that a little bit of an impromptu matchup here uh, this angle did get the crowd hotter Don Savage underperformed unfortunately here and it does go ahead and start the storyline between him and Guillotine Gordon I meant to start that storyline a, a little while back I believe these two had a match in the past and Guillotine cheated to beat Don Savage so um, that was kind of my plan there, but unfortunately, I guess I didn't. Uh, I didn't start it. Stupid me, right? Made the damn match, but didn't start the storyline. Anyway, though, we go into this impromptu match between Don Savage and Les Roberts. Les Robert, or excuse me, Les Roberts. What the hell? I almost said Les Roberts got a 31 E plus rating. The match itself got a 31 E plus rating here, and about that had a decent reaction from the crowd and subpar wrestling to it. Les Roberts goes over Don Savage in 7 minutes 47 seconds with a quick pinfall after a distraction from Guillotine Gordon. So the way I like to envision this is actually, unfortunately, TEW doesn't have a way where I can say, hey, Guillotine, distract the referee. So I, the way I like to play it is having the person, you know, in this instance, Guillotine, distracting Don Savage. But the way I envision it actually going down is pretty much Guillotine Gordon coming back down to the ring and uh, 
distracting the referee, you know, yelling at him, saying, Don Savage is cheating, do you see that, blah, blah, blah. But in the meantime, as he was running down to the ring, maybe he slides in a chain to Les Roberts or whatnot, you know, doing the whole uh, mafia thing, like, you know, here's your weapon, look at this hand while I use this hand kind of thing. So he's distracting the referee. Meanwhile, Les Roberts sees that the chain is there, and being the loose cannon crazy guy that he is, he takes to the, the you know, the chain because... Les Roberts don't care about no rules. In fact, even if the referee was looking, just looking at that chain, Les Roberts would have probably had a big smile on his face and just wanted to see what kind of damage he could have done with it. He wraps the chain around his his hand, or maybe he just whips it right into uh, Don Savage's gut and then maybe whips it across his back. Whatever you guys prefer. Either way, though, Roberts uses an illegal weapon here in this matchup before getting the pinfall over Don Savage and a one, a two, three, huge upset for the young Les Roberts here tonight. Unfortunately though, Les Roberts was really off his game. Come on Les, I need you to do better. If I'm giving you a push like this, you need to do better. He's getting better at his gimmick. Don Savage, oh excuse me, I should say Les Robert is getting better at his gimmick so we know who we're talking about. His loose cannon gimmick. Don Savage with an in-ring performance of a 32 Les Roberts with a whole 12 points lower. Golly, come on, Les. Get get on that game. Get on that game. 20 in-ring performance from Les. Goes ahead and advances the loose cannon storyline, or there's a cannon on the loose. And unfortunately, it lost some heat for our brand new storyline between Don Savage and Guillotine Gordon. That promo was good. It's a good promo. 38D minus rating here as out comes Ripper Savage to the entryway to cut a little bit of a promo on his opponent here tonight as we'll see Ripper Savage taking on Bob Roop. Last, not last week, but on the last episode, Ripper Savage got his shot at Jody Arnold's IWC Regional Championship, but Bob Roop kept to his promise and said that I'm going to cost him the title, and he did. He raced right down to that ring. Him and Ripper got into a little bit of a brawl end in disqualification. Technically, Ripper won the match, but because it's DQ, the title doesn't change hands, and uh, Ripper can't be too happy about that. So uh, let's go uh, Let's go up to the entryway and hear what he's got to say, shall we? Okay. Got to take a drink first. You know how that is. <clears throat> Freaking Bob Roop. Who in the heck did he think he is costing the Savage Slaughterhouse his IWC Regional Championship? Bob Roop is nothing more than a clown who couldn't lift my weight. Ripper Savage is a blueprint of what every man should strive to be. You think the Ripper is afraid of some clown? Not a chance. But just to make sure that clown doesn't bring any funny business tonight, I made sure to bring a special lady to watch my back. Because, ladies and germs, please welcome back the lovely Miss Sherry. And then out comes Miss Sherry, and Ripper continues to say, And with Miss Sherry back by my side, nothing, and I mean nothing can stop the Savage Slaughterhouse. Ripper Savage, everybody. Thank you, Ripper. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Great to see Miss Sherry back, by the way. I always love to see Miss Sherry back. You always love. Anyway, we move on to a 26 solid E rating here as Alex the Butcher, Surprise, surprise, makes his way down to the ring, but he makes his way down to the ring alone. Noticeably absent here is his partner, Alexis Smirnoff. We don't usually see uh, see the Russians, you know, one Russian without the other Russian, but uh, tonight we do as uh, Alex the Butcher is now in the ring and he's asking for the mic and he, uh, he takes to it and he goes on to say, Robert Fuller, join me in the ring, please. And then a few seconds go on and pass. Unfortunately, no Robert Fuller. Noticeably, the butcher is beginning to get angry. He goes, That was not a request. It was a demand. Now, join me in the ring before I come back and find you and then drag you to the ring. And then a few more seconds pass again. And then finally, out comes rockin' Robert Fuller, who is a bit cautious, as you can tell, uh, he does not want to get in the ring with Alex the Butcher, especially because noticeably absent is also 
Rockin' Robert Fuller's partner here, Jimmy Snuka. Jimmy Snuka, the superstar Jimmy Snuka, I should say, is uh, out working for another company, as is Alexis Smirnoff. But either way, Rockin' Robert Fuller, he, he gets in the ring. He's not going to back down from the Butcher. And uh, the Butcher goes on to speak again. He goes, a few weeks back, you and your partner beat Alexis and I in a tag team match. You survived at the end of the day. But then you and your partner continue to poke your nose in our business. But my partner isn't here. Yours isn't either. Is the rock star as good as he says? Or will he fail and fall to the butcher like the rest? Horrible Russian accent, by the way. I don't know who does these things. That's when uh, Robert Fuller takes the mic, has a kind of smile on his face because uh, he's going to poke a little fun here at the butcher. And he goes to say, well, mister, I sure didn't understand a word you just said, but if it's a fight you're looking for, it's a fight you got. And uh, the butcher has a big smile on his face. He backs up to the corner. And he does maybe the whole, like, just bring it kind of thing. Not like the legit rock, like, you know, just bring it, but does the come you know more like shinsuke come on kind of thing you know where i'm getting at here and our robert fuller goes to his corner takes off his cowboy hat and we have ourselves an impromptu matchup here i mean every match is pretty impromptu when i'm booking i honestly feel like i only ever book like two matches and then everything in between seems like it's impromptu either way though it did lose heat for our top team storyline hopefully the matchup here will do it a, a little better a little bit more justice the, the crowd couldn't understand Alex the Butcher, so that that's why. Either way, though, 44 solid D rating here as we have the one-on-one -on -one match between the Butcher and the Rocker. <clears throat> and a decent matchup. Alex the Butcher goes over, rocking Robert Fuller in 8 minutes, 3 seconds by pinfall, maybe with a big old thrust kick or whatnot. Either way, the Butcher puts away the Rocker. The Butcher with an in-ring performance of a 46, rocking Robert Fuller with a 32. And uh, Robert Fuller's improving in his rumble. Good stuff. Good stuff. We then go to the next. Oh! Oh! Oh my goodness. Someone fan me. A 56 C minus rating on this local to global or local show. I mean, it's not a local to global show. But what? I mean, I, I, that's it's not like the end all be all. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. A 56 C minus is a very average rating for me in the invasion series but on a local the local the global i haven't seen a c minus yet so wow give it up for him is there any question that alex the butcher is our star 56 c minus as the butcher just continues his attack on rock and robert fuller continues the beatdown. i mean there's no jimmy snucka who's gonna save him apparently no one no one wants to take on the butcher let me tell you that much there's no way we can live up to that. This storyline's going to be losing heat more and more, but good lord, a 56 C-? minus. You already know these two are getting the, the praise tonight. You already know. Unless Ripper Savage and Bob Root pull out like a solid C or something, you already know. Wow. Good stuff. Gained heat for this storyline, but of course... They just like Alex the Butcher beating up people, I guess, man. He's got good menace. 49 D-plus rating for our main event of the night in a decent matchup. Ripper Savage does indeed go over Bob Roop in 9 minutes, 42 seconds. After Miss Sherry interfered, I mean, he didn't lie. Miss Sherry had his back. She had his back, and at the end of the day, Bob Roop let her get to him, and that led to Ripper Savage hitting him with the... Uh, the Savage something, I don't know. Guys, come up with a finisher for Ripper Savage for me. Anyway, Ripper Savage beats Bob Roop with a little bit of help from Miss Sherry. And uh, I didn't add this in at the end. This is the end of the show. But I'd like to maybe imagine here Ripper Savage stands on the chest of uh, Bob Roop while Miss Sherry raises his hand in victory. A little bit more of a, an insult to injury there. Unfortunately, Ripper Savage was really off his game. Come on, Ripper, man. I'd be giving you this push and you come out me with these off your game. You better bring it. You better bring it. Look at Bob Roop. 
I'm, I'm, I'm letting you beat Bob Roop, and Bob Roop pulls out a 53? Come on. Come on. Bob Roop's the guy, guys. Bob Roop is the guy. Ripper Savage, really off his game. Miss Sherry did some good work ringside, though, so good for Miss Sherry there. Always a pleasure to have Miss Sherry. Always a pleasure. Bob Root with the insane in-ring performance of a 53, so you already know the three people getting our praise tonight. Ripper Savage, 31 in-ring performance. Not bad. Not bad. Gained heat for the storyline as well. As we go ahead, we end off the show. We get ourselves a 46 Solid D rating here. Apparently, we used Don Anderson far too much on the show. I mean, I only used him like twice. I guess twice is too much. Uh, it did increase our popularity in one region, but that doesn't matter to me. I, I, don't, I, I believe it when I see it. I believe it when I see it. Anyway, let's go ahead and let's tell... Uh, let's go ahead. We're going to tell Alex the Butcher. We're... We're going to compliment you guys because praise praise is if you, if you did both. But you didn't do both. You just did one. Compliment. We'll, we'll, we'll praise Alex the Butcher. Nah, we'll compliment him. Bob Roop, on the other hand. Bob Roop's my guy. Bob Roop's pray, pray. We're going to point him out as a good example. Guys, be more like Bob Roop. The Butcher, very happy with our speech. Robert Fuller, scene please. Bob Roop, very happy. I mean, of course they're happy. They know they're the stars. I know they're the stars. My dream match in the future, Bob Roop, Alex the Butcher, IWC Regional Championship. It'll draw in thousands. It'll draw in thousands. I just got to get my popularity up. Anyway, though, I'm, I'm going crazy here. Let's end off this episode. And uh, hopefully this doesn't put us in. I'm probably going to do like the last week, like week four drag it out as far as I can to see kind of where I am at in the hole. Uh, either way, though, I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, do me a favor. Leave me a comment, like, subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I hope you guys... I don't know where the hell I was going with this. Subscribe if you have not already. And as always, don't forget to share this video with your friends, Facebooks, Twitters, Instagrams. I don't give a damn. Anybody you feel would enjoy my content, give them a share. Help your homeboy get some new subscribers. Up in this bitch. And as always, my name has been OMG WTFLWBRB. And I'll see you guys in the next video, which may be uploaded the same day as this one. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Anyways, have a great one.